Hello, this is Eric of Not Baus and welcome to the best gaming monitors of 2022. A lot of these monitors, if you're watching this video when it first came out, are not available yet. They're that freaking new. A few of these are not as new, but this gives you more affordable options that you can get right now as well. And if you're looking for something yet more affordable yet and other options, Check out my best gaming monitors, budget gaming monitors, of 2021 and 2022. Links in the description below. One of these monitors is less than half the refresh rate hertz of the fastest one, and yet it's faster than it. Yes, we're talking about at least four, not just four, five times faster, yet being a lower hertz. Coming from the less exciting to the more exciting and things this year are getting hot. Now let's get started. Now to start this roundup, we wanna start with the smaller gaming monitors and then get to the big boys and the more exciting stuff. The ASUS Tough Gaming VG279QM is a 27-inch 1080p fast IPS 280Hz gaming monitor. For someone looking for fast eSports gaming, this could be your first pick and first choice in battle. This is for competitive, high frame rate gamers on a tight budget. Here's your monitor. Acer's Nitro XV252QF is a 25-inch 1080p IPS 390Hz OC monitor with a native refresh rate of 360Hz. This monitor has super low input lag to give you the edge. The color gamut is some of the lowest in this roundup, a common sacrifice made for pure speed. This panel covers up to 99% of the sRGB and 80% of the P3 spectrum, and is rated for HDR400. This is the go-to option for winning in competitive esports in a small, somewhat affordable form factor. The LG 27GP850B. This is a 27-inch, 180Hz OC refresh. This monitor is great at gaming, but does suffer from a lower contrast ratio than most others in this review. Make sure you have the newest firmware. There are fixes for this monitor to improve its performance. The MSI MPG321QRF-QD. This is a 175Hz at 1440p. This monitor stands out for having a great brightness level for an IPS and very good white levels. This monitor has color tones that really pop due to the quantum dot technology used. Once adjusted, the HDR experience is good. Better than nearly all other IPS monitors in this roundup that aren't using mini LED or quantum dot tech already. For more information about this monitor, please refer to my multi-part review playlist in the description of this video. The LG Ultra Gear 34PG 83A. This is a 160Hz 34-inch ultra-wide monitor with a wide color gamut. For an ultra-wide experience that provides smooth gameplay with the HDR experience won't be the greatest due to lack of brightness and lack of contrast ratio, but this is a good overall well-tuned monitor. Recently, a lot of my viewers been asking for monitors with KVM switches. So how about a monitor that's based upon the same LG panel, but a bit faster? At 180Hz, the ASUS XG349C. Now, this is a 2021 panel, but now we're pushing to the limits of 2021, and we're going to get to CES 2022 monitors. So these ones are brand new. If you're watching this today, a lot of these won't be out quite yet. Next on this list is Acer's X32FP. This is a 144Hz monitor with a 165Hz OC mode, 4K resolution with 576 mini LEDs and HDR1000 capabilities with only 576 zones. There can be a haloing of some small bright moving objects, 
but black or dark tones will look much darker than any non-mini LED monitor. The next monitor on this list is the Acer Predator XB3. Model is XB273U, a GX model 270Hz at 1440p. A great gaming monitor with very good color tones, even in HDR through the use of quantum dots. As far as IPS panels go, this one has good contrast. Samsung G8 Neo. Shortened model number is 32BG85. This is a 32 inch 4K 240Hz VA panel. It has 1196 zones of mini LED backlights and a 1000R curve. This is a gaming beast with the highest peak brightness in this roundup reaching an astonishing 2000 nits of brightness with normal peak brightness of 600 nits. With such a curve, keep in mind that viewing has to be straight on. At a distance, it won't be as enjoyable as if it was a flat panel. When you have an ultra curve, it's time to get ultra close. Oh yeah. If you've been enjoying this video so far, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to this channel and help this channel grow. Now you might be wondering, where's that big boy screen that I really want? Money's no limit? Well, let's get on it. The Samsung Neo G9. Now this is a 49 inch super ultra wide monitor with 2048 mini LED dimming zones and 2000 nits of brightness. Now this is a screen that you may really want to get. It's not totally brand new, but of course with the updates. Now you may not realize that, but Super Ultra Wide is not supported by many games and YouTube will have huge black bars on each side and that might not make for an enjoyable experience, but you'll have a lot of desktop space for different things all across the screen. And for the games that do support it, you'll get an ultra wide view and when it's curved, that looks pretty darn immersive for a screen that's so huge and curved. That's a curve I agree with. Alienware AW3423DW is a 34 inch 175 hertz 3440 by 1440 p resolution. This is an ultra wide OLED, the first one to actually have quantum dot technology and has a 1800R curve. Despite the low refresh rate, this is the fastest gaming monitor in this roundup with a response time at least four times faster than the world's fastest gaming monitors. There's no backlight bleed and black is uniform throughout. This monitor has the widest DCI P3 gamut in this roundup, making it great for pro graphics artists and should provide a very enjoyable HDR experience. The weakest point appears to be the typical brightness of only 250 nits with peak brightness of 1000 nits. 250 nits is bright enough for most, but a bit on the dim side. For those concerned with burn-in, this has a three year premium warranty that covers OLED burn-in. And now for a bit older monitor, this is the ASUS ROG Strix PG43UQ 4K 144Hz HDR 1000 gaming monitor. This has the slowest pixel response time in this roundup. Bigger isn't always better. There's some with mini LEDs and some without. And one that's actually HDMI 2.1 for console gamings, but this is a generation before. I chose this one because the most affordable and it's also, well, the highest rated. And now for one 27 inch that's newer. This is the ViewSonic Elite XG272G-2K. So this is a 1440p monitor, 300 hertz with 576 mini LEDs, HDR 1000 rated. ViewSonic does have a 4K option, not nearly as high for the Hertz and has more certification for HDR. So some of these had to be cut out of the options. List your comment below of what monitor options I have missed. The idea is because it has more and if they are shining more light, it could actually be a worse implementation or better. We'll find out when you actually see the screen and this ViewSonic 300 Hertz, that looks really freaking super exciting. They're not pushing too, too much light, a thousand HDR, 
Just watch for those companies that are pushing the spec for HDR brightness that are simply going for the numbers to get headlines and aren't a great implementation after all. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Leave your comments below and your thoughts and different screens you may have used that might have been amazing and missed this list. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day. Okay, you might be thinking, why didn't I list HDMI 2.0 and 2.1? Well, the problem is right now HDMI 2.0 and 2.1 are under the same umbrella, so if it's good for console gaming or not, until they're released, I can't tell you that because it has to be confirmed. And a spec number is no longer the way to go by. And if you're a console gamer, don't get ultra wide or super ultra wide at this time because the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X doesn't do ultra wide resolutions.